What do you know about Arizona? <laughs> what do I know about Arizona? Have you ever been to Arizona? Uh, I have not, but I'm I'm sure it's dry. Specifically Phoenix. Besides having like mediocre sports teams, what do you know about Phoenix? The only thing I know about Phoenix, Arizona is an episode of King of the Hill where they go and visit Phoenix and they step out of the car and Bobby is like, why is it so hot here? And it then Peggy <laughs> says something along the lines of this city must be stopped or something like that. <laughs> it's a it's a monument to man's arrogance <laughs> Something like that. you know what that's exactly how i feel about the desert man because uh when we went to vegas a couple of years ago which is like right right above arizona or like right next to arizona it, it is ungodly hot dude it's like 120 degrees and it's just like who would put a city here so like i've never been but i know it's a dry heat but i feel when it gets that hot it doesn't make a damn difference it doesn't make us it doesn't it's so awful so, Fernando, why are you asking about Arizona? Well, Austin, because in 1997, one of the most bizarre instances of footage involving unidentified flying objects occurred in Mar- on March 13th. And that brings us to the Phoenix Lights. Have you ever heard of the Phoenix Lights? I have heard of the Phoenix Lights. Uh-huh. What, what do you know about the Phoenix Lights? Uh, I know that it was one of the... No, sorry. It was the most witnessed ufo incident ever exactly uh, there was tons of there's pictures there's video like you can like, lots of on, news it was on the news yeah, news coverage on the news you can go anywhere and you can find this you can and, youtube it and everything will be right there and it's kind of there's no good argument for it not being aliens it's uh <laughs> it's uh they're pretty weak and we'll obviously get to those later but yeah we'll get into those details on march 13th 1997 a series of reports began to flood in to all call centers all over northern arizona regarding a strange object that appeared to be headed towards phoenix one of the first calls came in at 8 16 p.m and was made by a retired police officer who lived in the town of paulden located about two hours north of the city during this conversation The man claimed that he had observed a cluster of red-orange lights arranged in a V formation that were flying up up above the clouds. And additionally, the object made absolutely no noise as it propelled through the darkness. Four minutes later, another call came in. This time around, it was a man by the name of Tim Lay, and he was claiming that him and his family could see five distinct lights arranged in a V-shaped formation gliding across the night sky. However, in his report, The man made the alarming claim that all five lights were connected to a giant object that was shaped like a carpenter square. I'm going to stop right here. What's a carpenter square? A carpenter square is kind of like that. uh, It looks like it's a right triangle. Oh, I see. I see. It's for, you know, making sure to make walls and stuff. It it looks like a stealth bomber. Yeah, actually. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It does look like a military stealth bomber, but I don't know if they have lights like that. You can tell that this man was like definitely like a carpenter or something because i feel most people wouldn't make that comparison probably not i would just say stealth bomber was the stealth bomber like known about at this time actually i mean i would assume so because it wasn't around since like nam well i mean there was a period of time where it was like secret i believe like we weren't no one was really supposed to know about it i don't know when it was like released to the public bomber come out when was the stealth bomber made public a quick google search November 22nd, 1988. So it was relatively new. Okay. So it was around, though. We we knew it. Yeah. The public knew. Yes. Okay. One after another, the calls continued to pour in. And as they did, it became quite clear that whatever the object was, it was headed straight for Phoenix. However, when the lights did arrive out over Phoenix around 10 p.m., something even more peculiar happened. Instead of five lights hovering in formation, there were now nine. They're multiplying. They multiplied, man. The ship got bigger. I mean, you've had, you said you and your sister had kind of a story when you were like, oh, yeah. Driving. And I always think it's something that I made up and something that I imagined, or like maybe it was a bad dream, but we still kind of every now and then we go like, hey, am I making this up or did this really happen? And in for the context, uh, we lived in Vermont most of my uh, teenage and early 20s and <clears throat> clear skies every night. Uh, you could see the stars, you could see the satellites in space. It was really crazy. Like, but one one night <clears throat> we were driving along. I think we were taking my little cousins to McDonald's or something, and uh, we were stopped at a stop sign. But I kind of, 
I kind of noticed that there was some lights above me that were just kind of hovering. And I was like, okay, that's not a plane. It's just like kind of, kind of like the Phoenix lights, right? They were just literally hovering right above mm-hmm. me. And my little sister, who at the time was probably like 19, was right next to me in the passenger seat. And I'm like, hey, are you seeing this right now? She's like, I really wish I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, within a couple of seconds, the thing just z- like sped off into the night, like never to be seen. Like, it, it, and it went fast. And to this day, like, she she can corroborate my story and I corroborate it. But I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it's just two people, right? Like, so who's ever going to believe us? But it's definitely was uh, one of the creepiest things that had ever happened to me. So the reason why I brought it up is obviously aliens, but aliens, baby. When you like you during that story, you didn't actually like, really describe it. Like, <clears throat> did it look anything like this? Like, did it? Was All it I could orb, see was or? like I saw multiple lights uh, okay. just hovering. And then it was definitely too fast to be like a helicopter or I mean, I don't know what could just hover in place. Like what kind of airplane could do that? Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't. It's a jet or something, but it just fucking took off. dude. The only one I can think of that can do that is an Osprey, but I don't think they're that fast. They're the ones that have went fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember playing Call of Duty. (laughs) I don't think those can go that fast, though. But I don't know. I don't know Jack about. Those. I don't know. There was a lot of corn in where in the town I lived, man. Maybe they were getting ready to write a, a, a corn maze note. But it was definitely pretty creepy, man. I don't know. I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't if, like remembering it. What if every corn maze is actually like a crop circle, and the farmers like, well, might as well just capitalize on big this. farmer. <laughs> big farmers are in on it. Dude. <laughs> farmers and aliens hand in hand. In addition to the fact that there were now four extra lights, the behaviors of the lights themselves were also different. Allegedly, some lights would separate from the others and briefly hover in place over certain structures or areas. Over cars in Vermont. (laughs) Other reports claimed that the lights themselves began descending upon the town, almost as if they were falling in slow motion. One of the most disconcerting claims was from an air traffic controller who stated that he could literally see the lights out of his tower window, but nothing was showing on his radar. All of this carried over to the city of Phoenix for around 30 minutes until the weirdest thing of all happened. The light simply vanished without a trace. Yeah, the thing that sticks out to me, honestly, that whole thing you read was that air traffic controls are looking out the window Mm -hmm. at this thing. And then they're looking down at their radar and they're like, "Uh, that's not showing up. I mean, granted, I don't I know a lot of radar. It's like above a certain point. Like a certain height that it'll detect. So, but I mean, I, mean, I feel like radars can pick up on drones. They like like small drones, right? Man, man, right. As drones. long as they're you know calibrated to do that, because you got to think too. I don't think that radar is detecting birds because yeah, I don't think so. Unless because like that's an object, bird. but you know, you'd be, if they could detect birds, it'd be going off twenty four seven. You wouldn't know what the hell's actually out there because it'd just yeah. be constant. You'd be thinking things are running into each other and planes are going over the place. So, but yeah, I do think that's a little odd, especially if you see all these things moving in, you know, formation together and you're looking over here and it's it's definitely creepy. And I I don't, I I really still to this day don't know what the hell happened. And yeah, like we'll get into the theories, but at the end of the day, it's probably going to be one of the more unsettling, unexplained things that have ever happened in like humanity's history. I think let's face it. If it is what we think it is, you're not allowed to know anyway. <laughs> so. Well, now you are because the government, like, uh, what is it, uh, released? Remember when they released some footage? It was like a yes, year or two before the Supreme did. Court hearing. They did, but they didn't come out and say, these are aliens. However, they basically did in a way because they're like, well, it's not us and it's not the Russians and it's not the Chinese and it's not our allies. Okay, well. And you've seen the videos and like, uh, if you don't know, just look up like uh just do a quick Google search of like government, like uh, UFO videos. And there's like one where this, like, I think Air Force pilot yes. is yeah. following this object, but it's moving so fast that he loses it multiple times. And I think it eventually just disappears. And then uh, I forgot the other one, but there's like two videos. There's another one where basically it's kind of it's the same kind of thing you just described, but it gets away and they're like, OK, it's too, you know, it got away. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like. A minute later, or like even a f- couple minutes later, they get a call where they're heading to, 
And the guy is like, you're not going to believe this, but that thing you're looking for, it's here. And the thing that the thing about that is the place that they're going, it's like a hundred miles away. There's no mm-hmm. way even like a fighter jet was going to get there. You know, yeah, whatever, it, whatever it was could cover ground quicker than an Air Force jet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So whatever the hell it was, it was it was cooking. I do love the guy in the video you're talking about, though, like how like excited he is to be seeing something that's faster than his jet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, whoa, look at it go. <laughs> it's just like zooming across the ocean. Where, where if like I was in that, it'd be like, what the fuck is that? What the <laughs> fuck is that? Well, um, there what if they, uh, they silenced him? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. So after that event happened, as you can imagine, people began to ask questions. So what sets the Phoenix Lights apart from any other UFO sighting is the sheer number of witnesses that reportedly saw the event unfold. It is also the most widely photographed UFO event of all time. Again, feel free to do a quick YouTube search or Google search. You will find plenty. All in all, there were over 700 reports of these sightings, and that's not including the many others who probably didn't use official channels to report what they saw. Let's face it, I'm sure you didn't report what you saw to the police or the military. No, because like, I would just get looked at like I was crazy. Right. In, especially and in the 90s. Yeah. Someone was, will probably, well, no, what happened to me? Oh, yeah. Okay. I yeah, guess they're these guys. Yeah. For sure. It should be noted that many of the people who phoned these sightings in were public safety officials, such as police officers, airport operators, and even military personnel. As you can probably imagine, all kinds of rumors began to swirl around. Due to the mystery surrounding the event, an Arizona councilwoman named Frances Barwood inquired into the phenomenon during a city council meeting on May 6, 1997. Mm-hmm. So it's a few days later. Uh, during the council meeting, she asked if anybody knew what the object was or if the government was looking into it. Her question was then swiftly answered with a bunch of blank and accusing stares. After the session was over, another city manager approached Barwood and stated, you should not have asked that question. Unfortunately for Barwood, that simple little question was he dressed real. in black. I'm sorry. Sorry for cutting you off. No, you're fine. I, I no, it was just a city councilor, uh, city councilman. Um, and I'm gonna go on it. When I you know, it didn't, it didn't uh, specify if it was the councilman she asked. Yeah, I'm gonna guess not because this one kind of seemed more like a like an ally as opposed to like a political foe. Yeah. So I'm gonna guess this was a different councilman. The only reason I ask is because, like, when BuzzFeed, like, some of their early videos where they discussed aliens, there's always, like, that man in black. Like, which, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the whole Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones, men in black thing is actually based on real conspiracies of men in black that briefly show up after UFO encounters to Mm -hmm. basically clean it up, clean up the mess. Uh, We'll we'll probably cover that in a different podcast, but there's so many instances. There's so much so much to dive into so unfortunately for barwood after that encounter uh that simple little question would yield some unintended consequences for her political career that right there is red flag number one just saying um i'll explain more but politics is red flag number one (laughs) well yes fair enough any anything to do with politics is a red flag there's always an agenda in there always Uh, an agenda and they always go back on their word mm mm-hmm Soon after, the Arizona Republic paper would go on to create a cartoon that depicted the councilwoman with a light switch on her face and a button on her sweater that said, I love UFOs. I'm going to be honest here. I don't understand what the light switch on the face is. I don't get that. So it's a cartoon. I had a lot of trouble finding it. I found reports of the cartoon, but it was hard for me to find the cartoon. But obviously the button that says, I love UFOs, that makes sense. But I don't quite understand the light switch like yeah i don't get that maybe it was something from the 90s that was popular then that i I just don't understand now i don't know anyways so at her office in city hall she would face ridicule as people would stick all kinds of things next to her name in an attempt to make fun of her very very mature Uh, that's what i'm saying like (laughs) it's just so 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 silly that sounds so like high school ish high school only it's just like adults not only that but like how are you not going to be concerned about Something unexplained that just happened. Yeah, even if you don't think it's aliens. Okay, let's just... Fine. You don't believe in aliens? That's fine. But if we saw, you know, lights going over an area... We'll get to it also later. But there's a lot of, like, military activity around mm-hmm. Arizona. So wouldn't you want to know who's in your airspace? I mean, you know, I you feel don't like, know who it is. 
I feel like some people resort to name calling and bullying when they're scared of the unknown and they're like, oh, they don't understand it. So it's like, I'm just going to make fun of you and just ignore the situation at hand and call you crazy when in reality I'm in denial. I mean, that's very true. I mean, these people don't know the hell it is. And actually, we'll figure out that you might be exactly right. Um, So to continue the immaturity, allegedly employees even passed around makeshift business cards that displayed her picture, name, and a caption that read, speak into the tinfoil, I will hear you. It's not even good. So dumb, That's not dude. even funny. It's <laughs> like, just so. Oh my god! Like who it's came so up dumb. with that? It's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just so ungodly, childish, and oh, hundred percent. This person, but the thing is, though, yes, this is dumb. This is childish. I agree. But the reason why I said this is a red flag to me is one of the ways to suppress information is to make the person who's spewing the information look like a freaking moron. True. Now get I get it. It's just I understand it it may have been a different time back in the nineties. I know it wasn't that long ago. But I think if you believe if you openly said you believed in aliens in the nineties, more people than not would probably think you're kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, I think I know more people that believe in aliens than don't, to be honest with you. Honestly, same. Uh especially after basically all the footage you can find online and in- basically our own government saying that there's stuff out there that they can't explain. It's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, It's kind of hard to, uh, hard to come up with a logical, reasonable explanation. See, it's like they can't explain it or they won't explain it. (laughs) Probably a little bit of both. Probably. You know, if I mean, it it sounds, it sounds silly, but I mean, the fact that like, there's been so much secrecy behind area 51 since the forties, when there was a supposed uh, crash landing of a, a UFO. Uh, My, maybe it was the 60s. I don't remember. No, but anyways. Uh, 50s was Area 51, I believe. Yeah, but it goes a little, it's a little unsettling. It is. You know, what kind of makes me, like my mind with this stuff, because someday it honestly depends on the day, like which timeline I believe in, so to speak. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's the people who believe that like the government's working with aliens. You know, the aliens are working with us. And some days I believe that because you think of how like much technology has, you know, gotten better over the past, ever since the Air 51 crash. There's so many examples. Yeah. Like um, the uh, the microchip. That's a big one. Um, you know, it wasn't too long after that, that what would basically take a room and a machine that weighed like 30 tons all of a sudden got, com- you know, condensed into like a little chip within a decade, which is pretty crazy. If you really think about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, the microchip was still bigger compared to what we're used to. But I mean, even if it was, it was smaller than this, but even if it was like that big, you got to think 30 tons of machinery being, com, you know, condensed into that in a decade. Really? So there's part of me that's like, oh yeah, maybe they are working with them. But then there's part of me that's like, why the fuck would they work with us? <laughs> it's like, really? Why would they do that? Yeah. Maybe they're just like driving by and, the, you know, it's. I think I saw like a little cartoon one time where it's like an alien like a, like a ufo going by earth and it's like they lock see your it. door <laughs> and they like push the lock button on it as they yeah. fly by <laughs> i've seen i think i've seen that comic <laughs> it's it's silly but i love it okay on june 18th 1997 this is three months after the event uh usa today published an article on the incident as an and as a result the entire nation now knew of the phenomenon that became known as the phoenix lights the article stated On March 13th, hundreds of people reported an enormous object or objects in the sky. It is then most confounding. Oh, it is the most confounding UFO report in 50 years. And so far, there is no explanation, but the government is not investigating. The event began to garner so much attention that Arizona Governor Fife Symington. Symington? I think it's Symington. I think it might be Symington. Yeah. Held a press conference on the matter. And during the assembly, he claimed that he knew... The state knew who was responsible for the unnerving event and stated that they had the individual in custody. Upon saying this, a man dressed up as an alien comically walked up and took center stage next to the governor. I've actually seen this video, and it's the most ridiculous thing I had ever seen. It's like this, it's it's like something out of Men in Black, like an alien that's just like really like with the long fingers, the oval shaped head, like, and then like it's just so silly and so bizarre. So the 
idea that the governor pulled this along and, you know, decided, yes, I'm going to put a guy in a suit with an alien up here and make a joke out of it. Mm-hmm. It it just to me, like, it sounds like trying to laugh away something that's actually serious. That's what it comes. You know, that's what sticks out to me, because this is a governor, right? Yeah. This governor. Yeah, that's he's got a lot of stuff on his plate. Kind of. He's basically in charge of the whole state. Yeah, and this is what he's talking about and is how he's handling it. I don't know. It's kind of like... Uh, have you? Do you have it in here of kind of his stance, how it changed decades later or whatever? Yeah, yes, okay. I do. Um, before we carry on, though, there's... Uh, and there's another thing we could also do down the road. The Denver airport. Oh, um, yeah, that one's really weird. So everybody thinks there's weird stuff going on there because there's all kinds of like symbols and stuff like Illuminati that. Illuminati symbols. Yeah, there. yeah. well, the thing is... Today, they've kind of leaned into it, and they have, like... So, one of the weird things that's around there, there are gargoyles at an airport. Um, and they have a gargoyle that I believe it's actually voiced by somebody. It's kind of that thing they do at Disney, like the Finding Nemo thing, where they talk to people. Like an animatronic? Or, yeah, but they actually have a person talking. So, they have a gargoyle now that makes all these kind of jokes and stuff about... You know, that leans into the lore of the Denver airport. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, you know, haha, it's funny. But then there's other people who are like, oh, there's big conspiracy are, are theories. Are they hiding the, it? Like, are they laughing the, it off to yeah. hide things? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's tough because comedy, weirdly enough, can actually be a weapon. <laughs> like, it really can. Like, you can suppress a lot of information yeah. with comedy. You really can. Because haha, it's funny. You know, basically, and when you do that, you're not making fun of the incident or whatever. You're making fun of the people who believe that it's whatever it is they're saying you're just calling them crazy is what you're doing you're yeah. just making a joke out of it you're just uh you're you're diffusing the situation is what you're it, doing exactly you're manipulating the situation is what you're doing but i think that'd be a good topic is to cover the denver airport or even like uh early civilizations like uh i think it's the mayans but there's like statues that some people say depict a spaceman right yes yep so we can definitely get into this uh Oddly enough, despite the attempt to laugh the whole event off as a joke, the governor did later publicly state that he also saw something that night. I saw a huge craft come right over Squall Park. It was just breathtaking. And as a pilot and former Air Force officer, I can definitely say that this craft did not resemble any man-made object that I have ever seen. It was certainly not high-altitude flares, because I've seen flares fly in formation. Unquestionably, it was a UFO. And interestingly... Simonton's office did inquire about the UFO, but received no response. Yeah, and that is bizarre because he's the governor and they brushed him off. They did. And I think, I mean, I've seen some videos about this where their stance on it was, you know, oh, they were afraid to tell him things. But the thing is, if you tell him what's up and then you tell him what if you say this to anybody, there's some teeth behind it. He's mm-hmm. a lot. That's a lot less suspicious because he's going to actually probably listen because he probably values his. At the very least, he values his political career. Um, but when you tell a governor, "No, we're not telling you what happened in your own state," and then he comes out and says that, that is super suspicious. <laughs> One I didn't put in here that I forgot to, to be honest, but it's kind of interesting. So the actor Kurt Russell was actually a amateur pilot at this time. Huh. And he reported the lights to air traffic control. Was so he in Phoenix? He was in Phoenix. Hmm. So there's a Kurt fucking It doesn't Russell. really add huh. too much, but it's interesting that Kurt Russell was flying around. He reported the lights to air traffic control. Damn, dude. I did so not know that. A, That's a fun fact. It is a fun fact. So all right. You kind of have a lay of you got a lowdown of what happened. Roughly. So let's talk about the theories that people have proposed. So Symington's statement that you discussed earlier neatly leads us to the first and officially accepted theory. The lights in the sky were simply flares that were used during a military exercise. According to authorities, a training exercise was being conducted over the Barry M. Goldwater Range in Gila Bend, Arizona. During the supposed exercise, aircraft dropped flares over the range. They then claim that the wind must have moved the flares across the night sky, making them appear as if they were moving in unison. To provide further credence to this theory, 
a man by the name of Mitch Stanley was supposedly observing the night sky with his telescope on the night of the event. Kind of convenient. Uh, he claimed that when the lights hove into view, he pointed his telescope at the illuminated spheres and got a good look at them. According to him, they were clearly individual planes. End quote. <laughs> um, there are, however, a few issues with this theory. Chief among them is that the military claimed that the flares were dropped at 10 p.m. So while this may explain the nine lights over the city of Phoenix, it does not explain the lights that were seen earlier in the evening. Mm. Also, Tucson's Davis Monthan Air Force Base originally claimed that they had no planes in the air that night. So where did the planes come from? Doesn't make sense, dude. Does not make sense. So unless it's some kind of like, I mean, granted, there's lots of stuff. There's lots of military hardware we do not know about. You know, true. we don't know how it works. A lot of it's classified. And the uh, the desert is where they test a lot of the stuff that we don't know about. Because where else are you going to do it? Well, you could do it in the ocean. Honestly, but... that makes sense. Because that's what, uh, if you've seen Oppenheimer, that's where they did the atomic testing in New Mexico. Right. So, playing devil's advocate, Los it could totally have been a type of flare that... Because I could totally see it actually being useful to have a flare that's almost like connected. And it would move in unison to illuminate a whole area. I could yeah. see that. I could totally see that. And the government obviously wouldn't be truthful about it because they're trying to, you know, keep it secret probably for future strategies. Right. So I could see that. However, the the way they discussed it, it's just like it doesn't. It, the way they just described it was always oh, just normal flares. Flares won't do that. Flares aren't going to move together in unison. But the other thing too is. I again, unless they're an experimental type of flare, they're not gonna go. You know, it's two hours where, from that the first place they were seen to Phoenix. Yeah, I don't think flares travel that far. Yeah, they're gonna probably burn out or fall to the fall ground. To the ground, I mean, yep. that's what they would do. So I person, you know, that's me being. I'm done playing devil's advocate now. I don't believe that at all. Let's get into what probably happened. Okay. Theory number two. This is everyone's favorite theory. It was aliens. Aliens. As mentioned, cue the X-Files music. As mentioned earlier, hundreds of people claim that the lights were connected to one giant craft. Many people believe that this, this to be the case because the area in between the lights obstructed the stars in the night sky or at the very least made them appear blurry. Could this have been alien cloaking technology? Who's to say? To further discredit the flare theory, however, we can turn to the military themselves. On the third anniversary of the event, the National Guard put on a demonstration for the public. And during the demo, they dropped multiple flares from their aircraft. And despite their best attempt, the flares did not behave anything like the Phoenix lights. Instead, they quickly blew away from one another and quickly fell out of formation. Another mm -hmm. blow to the flare theory is that there was an elect alleged report made by an employee of Luke Air Force Base that contradicts the official report from the military. According to this source, two F-15s were dispatched to pursue the glowing spheres. I've actually heard this theory. Uh, when they came back, one of the pilots was visibly shaken by what he had witnessed. Alarmingly, the air base was put on lockdown immediately after they landed, and this purportedly occurred at 8.30 p.m., one and a half hours before they claimed the flares were dropped. The Air Force has since claimed that this series of events has never happened. Yeah. So you have something? Yeah, I do. And I, I should have brought this up when I was reading. I apologize. So <laughs> now I kind of wanted to wait for you to actually start talking about this theory. So tying my, the theory I read into this one, that man, uh, Mitch Stanley, who came, uh, came to bat for, you know, it being airplanes. Do you think he was paid off? <laughs> It's just awfully. I'll let I'll let you talk about that. I don't it, want to talk about. It. It's awfully convenient that this man just. I was looking at the night sky with my telescope in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden, ooh, there's these things, and those are planes. But six hundred the R six hundred ninety nine people didn't notice their planes. Hey man, maybe uh, maybe he's a plane expert. Maybe he's an aviation enthusiast. <laughs> but back to the theory. Eerily. A truck driver by the name of Bill Greiner may have witnessed this event unfold. As Greiner was driving down a highway outside of Phoenix, he maintains that he saw three fighter jets begin pursuing the orbs, 
and apparently one of the orbs bolted from its original position and then began pursuing one of the aircrafts. Could this have been the event that the airman was talking about? I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm the only person that actually connected those two. A lot of people would be like, a lot of the ones, they talked about Bill Greiner first, and then they talked about that theory, but they never connected them. And it's like, he watched fighter jets. Could it have been that? I mean, that would make sense. That would, and it was about the time that this happened. So maybe, you know, yes, they claim that never happened, but uh, Billy over here (laughs) is saying that uh, he witnessed fighter jets. And I don't know. It's just a little odd, I have to say. I don't know. Maybe Bill, uh, Bill witnessed it. Just saying. Who is to say? Where is Mr. Griner these days, dude? I don't know. I have no idea. So, what are we? Where are we at today? Well, today the government still alleges that the entire event was all simply just a military exercise that hundreds of people misinterpreted. According to them. There were no aliens, and nothing out of the ordinary was afoot. However, for those who do believe that what they witnessed was indeed a giant spaceship, this all probably feels like the gaslighting of the century. After all, hundreds, if not thousands of people saw something that night, and many of them believe it was something not of this world. They even took pictures of it. Honestly, that truck driver, good old Billy, who we talked about earlier, probably put it best when he said the following. I may be just a dumb truck driver, but I've seen something that don't belong here. I wish the government would just admit it. You know what it's like in the city right now? It's like having 50,000 people in a stadium watch a football game and then having someone tell us we weren't there. Maybe, just maybe, he isn't so dumb after all. And if you want, you can have all of our sources. We'll put it in the video, in the description. Yes, we, got, um, we actually got to do some. I'm trying to be better about that. I'm trying to put them in the description. No, that's good. That's good. The, that way people know we're not just fucking BS indeed. I will admit, it does feel weird because all throughout high school, all throughout college, you know, sources are supposed to be like peer reviewed. You don't use news articles. And let's face it, the nature of the stuff we're talking about, the only place you're going to, you're not going to be fine. articles. Yeah, in news articles and blogs and stuff. You you're know, not that's, be, why, that's why we. We, we podcast and this is theories right this, this is, is theories. mysteries it's not fact it's like right. it's what we think it's it's this is completely our our point of view just what we think and we're not scholars or anything so no not at all we're just I'm too... almost a doctor you know no you're not <laughs> i'm almost yeah but you're not <laughs> i'm just kidding. i'm kidding you're right i'm not but no i like you said this is our theories and honestly the whole point is just to give people information and they can de- you know, if you believe it, great. If you don't, that's cool too. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I don't believe in half. Sorry, I don't believe in ninety-five percent of the stuff we talk about. But I will admit, whenever we talk about aliens, I, I want it to be true. My ears <laughs> perk up, dude. I want it to be true. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe in aliens. I don't believe in ghosts or demons or anything like that. But that is folly, dude. I know. I'm sorry. You should be. So, yeah, uh, that is the Phoenix Lights. It's kind of short and sweet, but it's just a lot of it's just a lot of it's just speculation. I mean, what we do know is over 700 people saw lights in the sky. That's what we know. What we don't know is what they saw. Lights were. Yeah. No one knows what they saw. What it actually was. Except the guy with the telescope. He knows he knew exactly what he saw. Mm -hmm. So him and the government. Yeah. It's, uh, we'll probably never know. Unless, and you know what? That's why it's a mystery. You know, maybe a hundred years from now, we'll be declassified. We'll be dead, but you know, probably your grandkids might be able to know. <laughs> so, all right. Want to do have anything the... else you want to do? You want to plug away? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll plug away. All right, guys. So that's going to conclude our episode for the night. And if you would like to see more of our stuff, and actually see our faces if you have not if you're not doing that right now you can go over on youtube and you can find us over there at you go first pod that's our channel name you'll see all of our other podcasts we also have some shorts over there so you can check those out if you want to see us play some video games spooky video games you can go over also to youtube and that is you at you go first gaming we have a lot of videos over there it's a very active channel um, we actually have an okay amount of subscribers over there. So 
if we would absolutely love it if you'd come join us over there and check us out those are those are fun and they're more creepy i think <laughs> it's a lot of jump scares and stuff so if you're like you know especially a lot more late screaming night, and cursing a lot more screaming and cursing you know this one's a little more a little more family Laid oriented. Back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it family oriented? We don't call family. family Would you let no. your child family oriented, this? family friendly, it. but they're still swearing. That. It's you know. Anyways, um, if you are watching us on YouTube right now, but you want to hear us in your car or in the subway on your way to work or wherever, you can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, basically or wherever where, you get your podcasts. Wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have a question or just want to, you know, talk to us or boo us or whatever. Or suggest you, a topic. Or suggest a topic. Yes, that, that's a big one. We would love a suggested topic. Um, you can email us at yougofirst.tv at gmail.com. Those are all the plugs, guys. So before I let you go, before we let you go, Fernando, do you got any final thoughts? Uh. To play it safe, no, I don't. I no. don't have any final thoughts. Well, that's okay. If you really want my final thoughts, hit me up. Uh, hit me up at the email. Email, email us. And email we'll... me. <laughs> but then they're going to use it and they're going <laughs> to they're going to send all your letters to the government. <laughs> email me at a place where Snapchat me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Snapchat. All right, guys, that'll do it. Have a great night, everyone, and remember to mm. stay spooky.